Howdy all, Mach 1 Fireman here, and welcome back to Lost in Minecraft. If you remember last episode, we failed to finish up our tree farm. I still haven't worked on it. I went out a little while ago and did some uh, sand gathering. Got three stacks going in there. Got four more stacks in there, but I'm running low on coal, so we need to go caving. Ooh. Frames, thank you, frames. So, let's go do some caving today. And I think that there's a cave right over here. I'm all prepared, got my food, got my torches. Got some torches anyway, we'll need to make some here in a minute. I got stuff to make more torches though. Uh, cave, cave, I thought there was a cave right over here. Didn't we find a cave over here last episode? Oh, uh, that's not a cave. This will be my second attempt at caving in 1.6. You remember my last caving episode didn't go so well. Oh, look at there. And, of course, right off the bat. Get it. Be dead. Thank you. Guess we'll light up as we go for no other reason other than to light up as we go. So, I grab this coal right here. So I guess while we're caving, I might, uh, I don't know, tell a little story or two, maybe give a little public service announcement. Oh, look at there, a cave that goes nowhere. Cave to nowhere. A little prospecting hole. Go down a couple couple here, see if we run into anything. And nothing. Okay. Excuse me. A little stuffy today. Uh, Alright, so... Let's continue on. Continue our search for a cave. There, that's where I want to go. How do I get down there? Please, frames, catch up. I'm uploading a video. That's why I'm getting a little frame rate issue here. Um, how about over there? Is that a hole into a into the side of a mountain over there? Squid? Squid, leaves. It is. It is a hole into the side of the mountain. Does it go anywhere? It does not. Oh, I'm down here now. Damn it. Get me up here. Does it really not go anywhere? That's a bunch of crap. Anything? Anything. Just, just, just a cave is all I need. Oop, that's dirt. Help if I can see. Nope, nothing. Nothing of interest. So, uh, public service announcement for today. As I've said before, I am an, an actual firefighter and an EMT. I ride both a fire truck and an ambulance on two different days. Uh, oh, 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 nothing. Creeper hole. Oh, I missed. So, I feel like I need to pass on a little message that uh, doesn't often get said until it becomes a problem and it's a problem all of the damn time and that is if you are driving down the road minding your own business and you happen to see a fire truck slash ambulance slash police car coming behind you with all of his lights on and its siren going what are you supposed to do it's 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 a quiz let's let's see if anybody gets it i'll give you a couple seconds answer below what do you do when an ambulance slash fire truck slash police car comes up behind you running with his lights and sirens going anybody 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 want to take a guess that's right you got it. You pull to the right and stop. 
Pull it to the right. Some people have problems with. I, I, uh, I've been running, driving the fire truck down the road and come up behind people and either A, they don't hear me or see me and just keep on minding their own business, just just cruising along, doing, you know, the speed limit or whatever, and I need to get by, but I can't. You know, there's somebody's life I got to go save or a fire I got to go put out. I can't do it because you're in the damn way. But look at that. That's where I want to go. How do I get down there? Uh, right over there under that tree. That's where we're Oh, no, that didn't touch. Um, uh, let's see. How about over here? Looks like there's an entrance over here somewhere, maybe. Possibly. Theoretically. But no, of course not. I was incorrect. Uh, but yeah, you pull to the right and you stop. Some people have problems pulling to the right and stopping. I, it it frustrates me to no end. And anybody else that I'm riding with. Oh, there. There's a cave. There's a cave. Um, so, yeah, if you're, you know, it, it, if, if you see a fire truck, slash ambulance, slash police car, pull to the right and stop. Don't pull to the left. Don't just slow down and let them try to go around you. Pull to the right all the way as far as you can safely go and stop. It makes it much easier for us to get by. By us, of course, I mean firefighters, police officers, slash ambulance folk. Ooh, out of torches already. Makes it much easier for us to get by if you will just follow those simple simple that's way too many that's all right simple instructions it's not that hard it's not that difficult not that difficult at all but you would think that it's rocket science because people have such a hard time they don't understand and and then they get mad at us you know I could pull up behind somebody who's not getting out of the way like they're supposed to and I get on the horn you know the big air horn on the fire truck that makes a lot of noise. And then when they finally hear it and see it, oop, they get all mad at us because we're blowing the horn at them. It's like, well, dude, we've been blowing the horn at you for the past 15 minutes. Well, maybe not 15, but like past 20 seconds. And then you just won't get out of the way. Yeah. I've actually had people... One of the fire stations that I worked at was uh, on a big four-lane highway, Right? Uh, and what they teach us in uh, emergency vehicle operations is that if you get up behind somebody and they don't see you, don't try to pass them. Oh, that's a shovel. Don't try to pass them until you know that they can see you. Because if you try to pass somebody and they all they get all freaked out and slam on the brakes and run into you. Well, then it's your fault because you didn't allow them to get out of the way. And when they told me that, I was like, what? That's what all the lights and sirens are for is for them to get out of my way. They're like, no, no. Oh, no. It's a courtesy for people to get out of the way. I'm like, uh, no, it's not. It's their job. It's your job to get out of my way. Apparently, the guy who was teaching the class did not agree with that. Which, you know, whatever. I don't care. I didn't like him anyway. But anyway, I, I was a uh, big four-lane highway with a turning, turning lane in the middle. Okay, so basically it's five lanes. And they teach us to stay on in the left lane in a case like that. That way, you know, when people pull to the right, that you know, even if they don't see me, if they're in the right lane, I can go ahead and go around them. Because hopefully they won't be stupid and pull to the left. Well, guess what? I came up behind this lady. She was in the right lane. Heard me coming. Got on the brakes and decided, oh, well, let me just pull to the left. So she pulled to the left into the lane I was already in. And luckily I was not going fast enough to where I hit her. So I got on the brakes a little bit and moved over into the next left lane which like I said I was already in the left lane so the next left lane was the center turning lane so I pulled into the center turning lane to try to get around this woman 
and it was an older lady you know I you know I, I'm a firm believer that once you hit 75 you should have to take a driving test every every year to maintain your driver's license but yeah that's a different story so I, I, she pulls over to the left lane in front of me I'm like okay I'll just get over here into the turning lane the center turning lane to get out of her way well she sees me and she says oh crap that fire truck's not going around me like it's supposed to let me pull to the left again which again who lava was the lane that I was in which was the center turning lane so that forced me to go one more lane over which was the oncoming traffic lane luckily there wasn't anybody coming so I pulled over to the oncoming lane to try to get around this little old lady who apparently was confused about what direction she was supposed to go so she looks over in her in her mirror and says oh that fire truck's not going around me on the right like it's supposed to let me go over one more lane so she proceeds to get over into the oncoming lane of traffic I'm like what what is this lady and we're we're going about 40 miles an hour she's not slowing down any she's just she's just moving over steadily moving over lanes I'm like really really lady what in the hell are you doing so uh yeah so I had to get over oh here we go I had to go over to the left one more time which was the far far oh I heard a baby zombie baby zombie stay away the far right lane for the oncoming traffic and this lady decides oh or looks into her mirror and says Oh, look, that fire truck's not going around me on the right like it's supposed to. Let me get over to the left again. So now we're both in the far left-hand lane, as far left as I could go without getting on the sidewalk. And I, still going about 40 miles an hour because she hadn't slowed down any. And I'm like, what? Is, what I, I don't understand what this lady is doing. I I told the lieutenant, I was like, if I, for me to go any further, I have to get up on the sidewalk. He's like, don't do that. He's like, just pass her on the right. So I finally just passed her. Oh, uh, are you not loaded? Oh, no, you're not loaded. Do you go down? Please tell me you go down. You do go down. How far down do you go? Down far enough to a dead end. God dang it. So I finally had to... And when she, you know, when she got all the way over to the far left, which was the right lane for the oncoming traffic she finally started to slow down and you know stop because you know she looked in her mirror and was like oh this fire truck's not passing me on the right like it's supposed to what do whatever do I do now well she finally started slowing down so I ended up just passing her on the right like I'm not supposed to I was very upset so not very upset I was just kind of frustrated and that was like I said 75 you should start having to take a driver's test every year. But that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. That is your public service announcement for the day. Fire truck, police car, ambulance, run a license sirens, pull to the right and stop. Please. Makes things much, much easier. Now, if you can't, for some reason, if you can't pull to the right any because, you know, you'd fall down an embankment. Ow. Ow. Stop it. Fucking spiders. Oh, creeper, creeper, creeper. God damn it. I'm okay. I'm all right. Thank God I have armor on. I just, you know, I just want to get down there. That's all I want to do. I can see it. I can see it. I just can't see how to get to it without just digging straight down. And I don't want to do that. But anyway, fire truck, police car, ambulance, running lights and sirens, pull to the right, stop. If you can't pull all the way off the road because, you know, you'll fall in a ditch or damage your vehicle or something, you know, mailboxes, whatever, just pull as far to the right as you can get and stop. If you're on the hot... Oh, 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 that, oh man. Oh, God, almost fell out there anyway. Um, if, uh, if you're on the highway and a fire truck, ambulance slash police car, that didn't work like it was supposed to. There we go comes up behind you then oop, 
pull as far to the right, pull at least one lane over to the right, and stop, or not stop, slow down, and let the thing go by you. It's, there's nothing worse. Just think about if, you know, it was your family member that needed an ambulance slash fire truck slash police car. You know, what would you like somebody else to do? I'm sure you would like them to get the hell out of the way. So the fire truck slash police car slash ambulance can get to whatever emergency is trying to get to. Anyway, rant off. Finally, we get to where we can go down a little bit. So stop collecting. So I'm running, running a little low on iron too, so I'm going to grab all of this. I'm running low on everything. Like, that first cave trip didn't, uh, didn't really do a whole lot for me. So we're going to collect everything that I can. And see what we can uh, see. Hopefully we'll get some diamonds or something down here. That'd be cool. Oop, missed one. Missed one. Make sure we get that one. Oh, there's more than one. So Sweet. Wasn't quite eight like those first eight we found, but it'll do. It'll do. And of course not. It's a dead end. Oh, man. Really? How how can a pro such a promising hole lead to just a flat dead end like this? That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So I'm going to gather all this stuff up. Uh, yeah, I'm going to gather all this stuff up and see if I can't find my way into a cave somewhere. And I will be right back. Oh, hi. Holy crap, apparently there's silverfish down here. What in the fuck is that all about? That scared the crap out of me. Is that a silverfish? That's a silverfish. That's a silverfish. That's a silverfish. Oh, man. I was wondering why it took that block so long to break. Anyway, back to looking. Ha! <laughs> there we are. Theoretically. Yes, sir. Ravine. That'll work perfectly. Kind of. Anybody gonna be all crazy? Oh, look at there. I got it right at the end, too. Hi. I hear you. Water down there, water. Of course, there's no water right underneath where I am. Uh, oh, there's another one. There's another one. So, um, my pick is about to run out. Tell you what, let's uh, s smelt up some of this iron real fast. And to do so, I'm gonna need to do this. Oh, I'll keep the family bucket on at all times. Especially in a cave. Cobblestone. Ferni. And gravel iron. One, two, three. It shouldn't take long. Actually, so we don't waste the coal. Let's, let's go ahead and do it all. A whole eight. And I didn't go far. I was... Right down here is where I found the silverfish, bastards. And right in there is the hole that we came in. So I hadn't, hadn't been away long. Damn, I had no idea that silverfish would spawn just randomly like that. That's a bunch of crap. Hi, guys. I'll be with y'all in a minute. Actually, I should have just uh, waited. Oh, well, whatever. Iron right, pick. Three more. Nope. Come on. Come on. You know you wanna. You know you wanna. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And a tree. All right. Yeah. Meanwhile, stuff is just a spawning. Just a spawning. All right. Two of those for when that one breaks. You done yet? Almost. Almost. And a book. Put you there. <clears throat> and that. And that. All right. So, um, what do you say we just go down? That's what I say. Oh, I'm about to outrun the water. I'm okay. I'm good. Sweet. Anything back there? Let's go back here. Water. Iron. Okay. Can I block this water off? I can. Damn it. Right there. Damn it. Right there. And there's more back here. It's always good to see what's underneath. Oh, oh that's not what I wanted. And a book. Awesome. Gotta see what's underneath of the water. Put some blocks on the bar. Uh, yeah, I got my bucket. Got my fireman's bucket all ready to go. So, story time. Story time with Mach 1 Fireman. While wow, we're caving here a little bit here. Ravening, I guess we could say. Let's, uh... Let's talk about... I don't know. What do we want to talk about? Oh, I'm okay. How about my first fire as a fireman? That sounds like a good topic, right? Diamonds? Anything? Emerald? Woohoo! Redstone! Yay! Something other than iron. Ooh, sweet. Redstone, not that I'll use a lot of it, but I have plans for some things. And that's it. That's much crap. Anything else? Anything else? No, nothing. Uh, yeah, my first fire. When I joined the fire department, I was 21 years old. I was just a young lad. Um, uh, not obviously not fresh out of high school because you know I graduated. At however old I was when I graduated, and uh, excuse me, get in there. Uh, thought it worked. Thought I heard somebody coming. You know what the hell with this? There we go. Give me my give me my water back. Light. Uh, yeah, just a young lad at 21 years old. Had uh. Ooh, why are you push me that way? Why? Because I can. No. Um. And shut down. Sweet. Just a young lad. Didn't really know anything about the fire department other than, uh, you know, any of the interactions I'd had with uh, my uh, my stepdad was a firefighter for a short time before he got fired, and uh, you know I had interactions with fire department through him, but I was I was just a kid, you know, I didn't know what was going on. What is all the, with the, all the water? So, I didn't know, obviously I had never been in a fire, because, you know, they don't let children play in the fires. It's usually a bad thing when that happens. So, my first fire, I had no idea what to expect. And I was, I was excited. You know, I was excited to go to a, a house fire. You know, I was going to be sad if, if somebody's house burned down. But it was my job to keep that from happening. So it was, a, uh, it was a lightning storm, and I don't, you know, there's there's a there's a lot of fires that happen during lightning storms. Um, you know, you get people's house get struck by lightning, and it catches oop, catches on fire, and we go out there and we put it out. I mean, that's our job. That's what we do. You know, unless of course some 80 year old grandma gets in our way, and we're not allowed to uh, get there because there's just somebody in the way. They won't pull to the right and stop. Look at this water coming from way up here. So we get dispatched on this fire. It's a lightning strike. 
and it turns out that it's not an abandoned house but it's a uh, it's a new house that's been built but nobody has moved into yet thank you go away thank you thank you thank you and nothing but coal all right let's see if there's anything under here which is good because you know if nobody's bought it yet that means nobody's you know nobody's living there not gonna have to worry about anybody inside or anything like that so I am 21 years old fresh out of our recruit school which is the school that we have to go to it's a six month uh, you know training program for firefighters that is put on by the county that I work for it's all in-house you know yada 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 whatever it's a good good school I, you know I felt prepared for you know I knew what to do but having never actually done it in a live situation or in a situation at the fire station um, I was excited and nervous obviously very nervous about going to my first fire and but I was I was uh, I was excited and I was uh, I had confidence in the people that I was riding the fire truck with because the guy the other firefighter that I was riding with had been a firefighter for I don't know 20 years something like that so you know he'd been doing he'd been a firefighter for almost as long as I was alive so I had had a uh, had a good feeling that he knew what he was doing and he wasn't gonna get me hurt and he wasn't you know he wasn't gonna get himself hurt you know things things were gonna go all right you know I had confidence in him not so much in myself having never done it before but you know whatever so we go on this fire we get there and it's a two-story house and there's a little bit of smoke coming from a little hole in the attic. What the lightning had done is it had hit the peak of the roof and started a little fire. Eh, no problem. You know, we walk inside the house with our fire hose. There's no smoke inside the house at all. See all the way through the house. There's, you know, like I said, it was not under construction. It had already finished being built, but the uh, nobody had moved in there, so there was no furniture. So there was nothing to get in our way. We took the fire hose upstairs, and uh, the uh, the fire was in the attic. We knew it was in the attic because we could see the smoke coming out of the uh, out of the roof out of the roof line. And since there was no fire downstairs, then we had we knew it had to have been in the attic. Which hopefully that makes sense to most people. Water, no water, good. So we go and we find the attic steps. Now here in Georgia. Uh, the way a lot of the houses are built is they have a little door in the ceiling with a string on it and you pull the string and it comes down and the little door opens up it's like a little trap door I say little trap door it's, it's a decent sized trap door with, uh, with a ladder attached to it and the ladder unfolds and you climb up the ladder and get into the uh you get into the attic through those attic steps. Call them attic stairs. You know, I, I don't know if you have the same thing wherever you're from. You know, some people just have a little hole. What they call it a scuttle hole. A little hole that you actually have to put a ladder into to climb up into the attic. But this one had a had a ladder attached to the, the door. We pull the door. Hi, guy. Hi, bomb. Get dead. Oh, you must not have fell from very far. <laughs> Right up there, probably. Um, this ravine is a bust. This is a bunch of crap. Anything else that I may have missed? So, uh, no, no, nothing, nothing. So we pull down the attic steps, and my partner, uh, since he's the the veteran and I'm the new guy, he takes the nozzle, and he starts climbing up the attic steps he gets up to the top of the attic and mind you this is on the second floor so you know we only carry uh, the uh, the hose that's already attached to our engine is 200 feet long which is a long way but you know, if you start trying to pull it through a house it doesn't really last all that far sometimes so we get up we're on the second floor and we start we, we go it, there's a little hallway and the, the attic steps are in the middle of the hallway 
So he climbs up the attic steps and gets to the very top and says, I need more hose. He turns around and looks at me and says, I need more hose. Go pull some more hose. All right, fine. So I turn around. I'm not on the attic steps. I'm still in the hallway. So I turn around and go around this little corner and grab some more hose. Start pulling, pushing some more hose towards him. Well, as I grab the hose and start walking back towards him, around the corner, I, I hear a whoosh, and I see a giant fireball coming directly towards me. No joke, just like you would see in the movies, giant fireball coming right at my face. So, naturally, I do, you know, my instincts take over, as they always say, and... Uh, where's that guy at? And I hit the ground. I, I turn away from the fire and drop down on the ground because, you know, fire goes up. And if you're... Fire goes up. So if you're on the ground, hopefully the fire will go over you. Well, as soon as I hit the ground, I kind of look back over my shoulder, right? And uh, there's no fire. I'm like, what the hell just happened? What what was that? So, oh, oh, oh there we go. Oh, oh, come on, come on. So, uh, I didn't know, but there was, that, there was also another crew inside with us. And they were in one of the other rooms. Hello, frames. Frames, catch up, frames. I hear a zombie. I would like to catch him, please. Because that means there's a cave that I missed. Frames. Frames. Oh, my goodness. Oh. All right, let me cycle fraps real quick. Okay. Uh, hopefully that'll be better. Yeah, my freps folder was full. But I also noticed that this episode is getting rather long. It's a failed attempt at some caving again. I mean, we found some stuff. Okay, apparently that didn't fix it. I mean, we got some. We got some stuff here. We got some. Got a almost two stacks of coal. Got some redstone. Not quite a stack of iron. Next time, I'm going to do some more off camera. Obviously, because I need the materials, materials. I will uh, next time I decide to go caving on camera. I will scope us out a good cave before we get started. That way, I don't waste half the episode actually looking for one. Oop, creeper died. But first, I guess I need to finish up my story before we go. So it's going to be a long episode. Hope that's okay with you guys. Uh, so. I went to go pull my partner, uh, business, my working partner, some more hose. Come around the corner, giant fireball. I don't know. I don't know if it knocked me down or if I hit the ground because of my training. I tell everybody that I hit the ground because of my training because that makes it sound better. But um, it could have knocked me down. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, regardless, I'm on the ground looking up and there's no more fireball fireball is just like it was like a whoosh it was like a, a whoosh and knocked me down I got down however it worked and then when I rolled over and looked back over my shoulder there was nothing there so I immediately hopped back up it's like holy hell what was that uh, um, um, what was that so I don't hear or see my partner anywhere I'm like, uh oh, this is no good. And like I was saying right before I Whoa Nelly. Right before I stopped recording the just like a fraps there, uh there was another crew that had come in behind us, another couple of firefighters that I didn't know about until I turned the corner and they were um, excuse me, up and over please, thank you. Uh I come back around the corner and they were coming out of one of the adjacent bedrooms close to where we were and I, I grabbed uh, the uh, let me see what level are we on 12 yep um, whoop hey I need that the uh, <laughs> look at there gold 
Um, we can distinguish the different ranks um, of, oh, I'm full. I don't need that. Uh, distinguish the different ranks of our fire department based upon the color helmets we have, like firefighters are black helmets, the sergeants are yellow helmets, lieutenants are red helmets, lieutenants and above are red helmets. So I came around the corner and I see a red helmet because with all the masks and stuff we can't actually see each other's faces. I just saw a red helmet. So I grabbed him and you know took him with me and we came around the corner and there's my partner laying on the ground, not moving. I was like, holy crap. And not only was he laying on the ground, let me see if I can... Uh, do this real quick. Um, let's say, whoopsie daisy. Let's say that these are the steps going up to the attic, right? Oh, look at there. Emerald. Let's say these are the steps going up to the attic. And the attic's up there. He wasn't laying like down here on the floor. He was laying back here, like underneath of the steps. Like he had gotten blown out of the attic and fell around the steps and was laying underneath of the steps. It was the craziest thing. And of course, my lieutenant, who's outside being in command, is freaking out because, you know, there's a big fireball that went through the house. And, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he's freaking out. He's sent somebody else in there to check on us. And meanwhile, we're trying to get out on the radio. The lieutenant that I grabbed to help me out. Um, to try to get out on the radio, and my lieutenant tried to call in on on the radio, and it was just it was just chaos for about two minutes, like two minutes. Nobody knew, nobody outside knew what was going on inside, and nobody inside could tell anybody outside what was going on, and just absolute chaos. So, just out of the blue, this guy shows up, another firefighter, my one of my other firefighters in full gear shows up, was like, what you know, what where's I'm not gonna, you know, where's where's Mark One Fireman? You know, where's where's this guy? Where's that guy? And I finally had to grab him by the shoulder pad or the shoulder straps. Like I'm right here. I'm fine. This guy is the one who's hurt. So uh, yeah, he uh, the guy who was up in the attic, my partner. He he finally comes around after about like I said about two minutes. He finally comes around. And he's like, I'm all right. I'm all right. My back hurts a little bit because we were trying to figure out how we we're gonna get him out of the house because he's a big guy. He was a big guy. Um, we're trying to figure out how we're going to get him out of the house without hurting him further. And he finally comes around. He's like, I'm all right. I'm all right. I just need some help getting down the steps and outside. We're like, okay, fine. And so a couple other guys took the hose and went back upstairs. And we helped, our, uh, helped the guy back downstairs into the waiting ambulance. Took all his, you know, took all his gear off of him. Into the waiting ambulance he went and off to the hospital. Now, I talked to him later that, day, uh, later that day, he actually was released from the hospital and came back to the station. And we had to tell him what happened. He's like, I don't remember. I don't remember what happened. I remember seeing, you know, going up into the attic and seeing a little glow. I was like, oh, well there's a fire. Let me put some water on it. And as soon as he did, he said it felt, he saw a, a large orange glow and it felt like somebody hit him in the chest. And the next thing he remembers was being in the ambulance, getting transported to the hospital. We're like, uh, what? He's like, yeah, I don't remember anything after that until I got into the ambulance, or until I was almost to the hospital in the ambulance. We're like, uh, well, you were awake. You told us you were okay. You walked outside. He's like, yeah, I don't remember any of that. Didn't remember a bit of it. So, that... Ladies and gentlemen, or boys and girls, or whoever is watching. Is that a cave up there? Uh, that is the story of my very first house fire. Nope, oh, it's not a cave. Very first house fire, and we, we determined that it was, a, it was an actual backdraft. I was actually experienced a backdraft. Not like the movie Backdraft, which was awful, by the way. Uh, but an actual backdraft. So uh, what a backdraft is, for those of you who may or may not know, uh, basically the fire 
you know, fire needs three things. It needs heat, fuel, and oxygen in order to maintain its chemical combustion. So if you re remove any of those three things, that's basically how you, how you put a fire out, is you remove any of those three things, the heat, the fuel, or the oxygen. And what had happened, or what happens in a backdraft, is the fire burns up all of the oxygen available, but the heat and the fuel are still there. So if you reintroduce oxygen into that environment, it ignites. Oh, zombie brain. The fire, the fire comes back with a gusto and basically makes a little explosion. Sometimes not so little. And that's what had happened. Uh, the fire had burned up all the oxygen in the attic. And when my partner decided to open up the hose, he introduced a lot more oxygen back into the fire area and caused an explosion. More or less, simple terms, an explosion. And it blew him out of the attic, around the steps, to the ground. Knock, rendering him unconscious and knocking me on my butt and scaring the ever-loving crap out of me. So that is my first fire. And that concludes story time with Mach 1 Fireman. Every now and then I'll interject some stories in, you know, just to keep it a little entertaining. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully entertaining. I don't know if it'll be entertaining or not. You'll have to let me know. And I gotta sneeze. No, no, I'm good. Yeah, I do. I have to sneeze, but I'm not going to. But first, before I sneeze, I'm going to end this episode. So as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. Please stay tuned for next episode. We will do something. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have to figure it out. I'm gonna do some more caving off camera. Hopefully, get some stuff. I'll probably have. Well, I won't record, but I will. Uh, I will be prepared to record in case something cool happens. So next episode, we'll do something. Ouch, my face. And by face, I mean feet. I appreciate y'all for watching, and I'll see you next time.